Let's say you need to make a Power BI semantic model and you need to choose the model storage mode, how your tables are going to store their data. You know you have import, you have direct query, but you also have other options. You don't quite know what those options are and when you would use them, so you need to do some research. Now, it used to be you would have to use Google, search the documentation, read some blogs, watch some YouTube videos to try to get an answer. This would take time, it would be a bit challenging, and eventually you would get some information to make your decision. Nowadays, to make this process more efficient and convenient, a lot of people are using LLMs. They're asking LLMs questions, using LLM tools, and then getting these responses back with a summary of the information. This can be very convenient. However, it can also be a problem. Due to the nature of this technology and the tools, you can actually back yourself into a corner and make mistakes very easily without even realizing it. Now, I'm gonna use this scenario to show you some examples of this step by step for each of the different model tools that you could use. It's important to clarify that I'm not saying you shouldn't use these tools. At the end, I'll give you some tips on how you can do this effectively and avoid or at least mitigate the risk of these caveats. It's important to be aware of the risks and the cons of the technology, not just the pros and the advantages. So let's take a look. I am using Claude Desktop in this case. I'm using the Claude model because for me, for technical topics, that gives me the best results. But this applies to any LLM tool you're using, ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini. It's all the same when it comes to the topics we're talking about now. So let's ask it a question. Give me a summary of the different Power BI semantic model storage modes in a concise table overview. Now, we're not using web search, we're not using Microsoft Docs, and we're going to submit this information. So based on the training data, Claude is going to come back and it's going to give us a summary of these options. Now, I'm not gonna comment specifically on the Power BI topics. I'm just gonna highlight, you know, different obvious things that might be wrong or, you know, missing, but I want to focus more on the LLM. Now here, the point is that we see we have import, direct query, and so on, but we're missing something. We're missing direct lake. Why are we missing direct lake? And if you don't know what that is, I have a link in the description to all the different storage modes and the information that's being referenced in this video, because again, I want to focus on the LLM, but we're missing direct lake, which is a new storage mode with Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. And the reason is because the training data is limited in time and scope. So direct lake information is newer and it might not be represented in the training data or at least very sparse or not present in the training data in high volumes. So basically the LLM could be erroneous in omission meaning that it's not wrong because it's hallucinating or because it's giving you misrepresented facts, which can happen, and most people should be aware of this, but it's wrong because it's not showing you things. Now, before I explain how to deal with that particular challenge, I wanna show you something else. So keep in mind here, we got import, direct query, live connection, composite, and dual. And let's open a new chat, ask the exact same question, and see what result we get. So first of all, we see it's not drafting an artifact and it's giving us import, direct query, composite, and dual. It's no longer saying anything about live connection. So we have two different results from the same tool, the same model, with the same prompt. This is called non-determinism. The fact that we are not getting a deterministic result. We're not getting the exact same output from the same prompt. Why in this circumstance and scenario is this a problem? Well, imagine that you and your colleague are doing this research, you're using the same tools, and you're coming up with different answers. That could be a problem because it leads to you both having a different understanding of the situation, which makes it less efficient to be able to talk about it and make decisions. And you're making the assumption that because you're doing the same things in the same tool, that you're going to get the same results. And that is not true. Now, non-determinism can be interesting and advantageous, for example, when you're coming up with ideas or you're iterating. But in this case, when you're trying to use it like a search engine, it can be very problematic because you're getting different results every time. So to summarize, 
When you're using just the vanilla out of the box model, you're limited by the training data. It could be erroneous in omission because of missing information from that training data or information that is sparse, and it is non-deterministic. Now these challenges also apply in the other situations that I'm gonna talk about, but I'm just highlighting it already now. So can we search the web? Well, the answer is yes. If we enable web search, we can ask it to uh, search the Microsoft documentation and give a summary of the different Power BI uh, semantic models, uh, storage modes in a concise table overview. So now because we're telling it to take an action, it's going to hopefully invoke this model, this search. So it's searching the web. So we're able to deal with the fact that the training data is limited in the time and scope by getting more recent information from the internet using this web search. So hopefully this is able to come up with indeed direct lake, which we have here and we're able to get the more recent information. So great. So we should always use web search, right? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be getting better results because for example, we're still missing something here. What about hybrid tables that have a combination of import and direct query storage mode in the same table? Now that is not represented here. That's not necessarily a storage mode for our semantic model, but what about with direct lake, we have different types of direct lake. So here we could get a simplified version of the situation and hopefully it should be able to provide us some sources, which we have here. So storage modes, semantic model storage modes. And of course, it's very good that it's quoting Sandeep's blog. I think that's fantastic. Very excellent blog, by the way. I recommend you check it out. So uh, it gives us the sources and it's very important that when you read this, so this is one way that you can avoid a confusion is that you click through and you read those sources in order to understand how their information is being represented. Now, what I want to point out to you is that when you're using web search, it's not guaranteed that it's going to come up with the correct result. Now, this is an example of when I provided a very similar prompt asking for the different table storage modes for Power BI semantic models. It does the web search, as you can see here, and it doesn't come up with direct lake. So again, this is the non-determinism. So it's not guaranteed that you are going to get the correct results or that you're going to avoid this error in omission just because you're using web search. Again, this can be a challenge and you should never su assume that the result you're getting back is complete. And it's very important that you proceed in a more complete way, checking the sources and checking around to be able to make sure that you validate that assumption. Is it leaving things out? Because if we were to rely on this example, then we would miss direct lake entirely, but here it did pick up hybrid tables, for example. So these are non-overlapping as such. Okay, so that is web search. Now, what is the next thing that we could do? Well, if we open a new chat here, so we could ask it to search only the Microsoft documentation using a remote MCP server that is designed specifically for that. So recently Microsoft came out with a MCP server that we can use from Cloud Desktop, which is an MCP client. Basically all that means is it's a tool that it can be used from our Cloud Desktop in order to search the Microsoft docs. So you can think of it like a mod or expansion pack that gives you access to special tools and resources to help you do a thing. So when we're saying search the Microsoft docs, so here we'll say search the Microsoft docs, and now it's going to return us back this information, first prompting us to use this MCP server to search the Microsoft Docs. So in this case, we're not using Claude's out-of-the-box web search, which can search any source, but we're just searching the Microsoft documentation, which could be then interesting because then we're able to hopefully have a more reliable output. And indeed here, we have both hybrid tables and direct lake, for instance. So using this Microsoft Docs MCP server, 
we could potentially get better quality results because it's a more focused search. It's provided by Microsoft to search their documentation. But again, what I want to point out is that this is again not going to guarantee that you get the correct results. Because when we do something here with a similar prompt, we again don't get direct link. So in this search that I did earlier, it's asking for the different storage modes for a semantic model in a concise table. We have import, direct query, dual, composite, hybrid tables, but we don't have direct lake. So it's leaving out direct lake again. So again, this error by omission is still something that's a challenge. So it's something that you need to keep in mind when you're using these tools is that there could be missing information and you might want to try it multiple times. You might want to try a mix of tools you want to make sure that you validate that assumption before you take this as fact. Now, what you could also do is you could use this research mode. Research mode, if we're looking here, so research mode is going to take more time. So in this case, it took 13 minutes to go through more sources on the web and compile with some reasoning a more comprehensive overview of the information. So as we're looking here, we get then a summary with citations of the different information, but it has here direct lake. And interestingly, this could be erroneous in more nuanced ways. For example, it's saying here that uh, when capacity limits are exceeded, direct lake transparently falls back into direct query mode. And that has been true but there are different types of direct lake. There's direct lake on one lake and direct lake with the SQL endpoint and direct query fallback isn't supported by direct lake on one lake. So the research mode in this case is misrepresenting the information. And we see here that in fact, when we have the summary in the Microsoft documentation that's comparing the storage modes, that it actually shows two different ways to compare the direct lake, direct lake on one lake and direct lake on SQL endpoints, something that's not represented in any of the searches that we've done. And we might have missed that entirely if we just base the information off of what we're getting from the LLM. So there can be more subtle and nuanced things that are missing if we're just relying on the sources we get from the LLM. That's why it's very important to look at the underlying sources uh, like if you're looking at a blog post to look at it, if you're looking at the documentation, but this is particularly important when you're searching with documentation so that you can validate the assumptions that you have. So this is a uh, research that I did when I was just asking, I was doing some tests asking for information about conversational BI. And we can see here that it's giving us a summary of all this different kinds of information but I want to point out something that really stood out to me. So it's talking about, for example, Power BI Copilot. And it's talking about Power BI Copilot, typical implementation. And then it's saying competitors like Tableau, GPT, ThoughtSpot, Sage, and ClickSense face identical challenges around data quality requirements, user training needs, and governance complexity. And then it's citing my website with success rates across platforms range from 40 to 80% when properly implemented, but all require similar investments in data preparation and change management. So this sounds like a very authoritative and professional statement. It sounds very believable, but actually I am the one who wrote this article and I did not say any of these things. So none of this <laughs> comes from my article. If we actually go to the article and then we search for Tableau, for example, all I said was one paragraph here. I don't think Copilot is a feature that currently makes Power BI better than its competitors' products like Tableau, whose generative AI feature, Einstein GPT, suffers from much of the same criticisms as Copilot and Power BI. So this is an article I wrote in September of last year. I only mentioned Tableau with Einstein GPT because you know it's something I had looked into and it had the same kind of challenges, but I didn't mention anything about ClickSense or ThoughtBots, ThoughtSpot Sage. Uh, I didn't say Tableau GPT. Uh, I didn't talk about these specific things, and I have no idea where this information is coming from that it's, it's, it, it's getting here, and it doesn't provide a source from it. 
But if you're reading this, you might think that I, as data goblins, said this. So this is actually potentially misattributing things toward my article, which is very, very problematic. So there could be these subtle and nuanced errors where it looks like the LLM is generating text that sounds very authoritative and professional and intelligent, but it is, it is wrong in nuanced and subtle ways. So it's very important that you're aware of that. And again, how can you be aware of that? Well, if there's something that triggers you here, then go to the source and try to find where it's getting this information. And what you're going to find a lot of the time is that it is twisting those words in very slight and nuanced ways to change the meaning of what it's saying. An example of this is it might extract a sentence or two and shuffle it around out of the context where it's saying something like, for instance, uh, never use calculated columns. It takes that out, it gives that to you as advice. But then in the context, it's saying, you know, however, there might be other circumstances where calculated columns make a lot of sense, such as this, this, and this. So seeing that information out of its original context can misrepresent it and change its meaning. So basically, to summarize, what I'm saying here is that you can use LLMs to help expedite and make the process of doing research more convenient, more efficient, but you need to do so with a good understanding of what the limitations, the risks, and the challenges are. You need to know that, for example, training data is limited, so it could be missing things. You can compensate for that by using web search and MCP servers, but it could still be erroneous in omission, and it's not guaranteed to give you all of the results that you're looking for, as we saw with the examples where it was missing direct like. Second, it's important to be aware of the fact that this is non-deterministic. So if you do the same thing multiple times, you could get different results. This means that it's important to do some checks, maybe try the same search multiple times to see how it compares, to just become familiar with how if you repeat the same search multiple times, you see different information, and that helps you be more aware of how this message is subtly shifting depending on, you know, how you're asking and the result it's getting it back. So the third thing that I want to point out is that there could be mistakes and errors that are very subtle and nuanced. For example, it could be slightly misrepresenting the information from its context, or it could be implying things that aren't necessarily true. So in order to deal with these and some of the other challenges, it's important that you use this process as a kind of discovery. Discover what kinds of sources have information about this. We saw that we have information from Microsoft Docs, we have Sandeep's blog, so we could use this to discover new incredible sources and then we could read those articles rather than just reading the AI summary in order to get a more comprehensive view of that information. So this can be a really good way to discover new terms that you should search in traditional methods like on Google, uh, trusted sources like from expert blogs, documentation, where you can search those terms again, for example, and uh, specific interesting articles that you might want to read more comprehensively so that you're not taking those little tidbits of information out of context. So that's all I had to say. I don't know, have fun, I guess.